Tomorrow is the publication date of what might be the best baseball book written in 40 years. It's called The Bullpen Gospels, and it's by Dirk Hayhurst, a relief pitcher of the Toronto Blue Jays. But Hayhurst has written about something larger than sports. It's about what happens when your dreams about your intended profession, whatever it is, run into the reality that at times everything is a job. See, about two years ago in the off season of 2006 to 2007, I awoke at 5 a.m. in the morning to the sound of my grandmother screaming her head off, banging on a steel door with her broomstick because there were squirrels in her bird feeder. <laughs> so the end result of this was me in my underwear with a pair of snow boots on throwing snowballs at the bird feeders until the squirrels left so I could go back to bed. And it was around this point in my career as a baseball player that I had to stop and look at the direction my life was going in and say, is this really where I thought I was going to end up after six years of playing baseball? The answer is no. I mean, when I signed the contract, I expected limos to take me from point A to point B, and I would be signing sweet autographs for every little girl and boy who saw me. So I had to, I had to start evaluating things. Now, like I said, it was one of those moments where reality just wakes up on top of you, you know, like this is this is what I went home with last night, oh my gosh, you know, what am I doing here? So I had to make a decision and, and I started looking at baseball in another way and, you know, this is what I came up with. And that was the release point uh, in a way, I mean, that's when you found that uh, suddenly you're, you, you were pitching better, that, that uh, you were making the progress you wanted? Well, it was like, what's, what is there to lose? I'm just going to go right after guys. Get me on the mound. I'm going to challenge you. If you beat me and I get released, thank you. Then maybe I can go on with the rest of my existence. Mm -hmm. But when you come out there with that kind of mentality, when you attack hitters and you have success, I mean, that's, that's the way you should have done it in the first place. You go out there, it's a gamble. When you put it all on the line and you win out and you win big, you see what can happen. Mm -hmm. But when you're scared, I mean, if you're scared of the game, you're going to fail. And that's what I was doing. And, I, and mm -hmm. I, it took that epiphany moment of me falling all the way down to Grandma's floor to figure it out. As I read it, I'm, I'm thinking, you're giving fans a chance to live the life of a baseball player, especially a minor leaguer. Well, that's what, you know, that was one of my objectives. It wasn't just to tell you this is what it's like. It's to let you feel it, show it to you, you know. And uh, I, you'll be shocked, maybe, maybe, to know that a lot of the stuff we do is a lot of the stuff that you do or anybody does. You know, we're people underneath that uniform. We're common. And we do a lot of goofy, immature things as young men. And those stories are there, but also the hardship, you know. I want you to feel that, too, that that doubt and that fear of not making it because statistically most of us won't and we struggle with that all the time I mean don't let all the bright lights and the fame fool you there's a lot of fear underneath that uniform and as champions as warriors we don't like to express that but that, that comes out in this book amidst the funny stories um, there is a, a father-son reflection in here too especially with Father's Day coming up and you hit hard domestic violence and what's going on in your real world yes. in your life before you made it to the bigs. Yes. Um, and how hard was it for you to write about that? Uh, you know, it, it's tough. It's, it's always tough to, uh, to put a personal side of yourself out there. And then family issues, too. You know, that's a private thing. But I wanted the book to be believable and relatable to people. You know, and I think if I was to talk about like big money or luxury jets or bright lights, I mean, most normal people can't relate to that. But there are a lot of folks out there who have broken homes, broken relationships with family members. You know, they, they're struggling, and the fame and the fortune doesn't remove that. You know, so I didn't pull any punches on who I was underneath the jersey. And by being honest about me, by bearing my soul, I let people kind of into my world in a more believable way, in a more relatable way, and I feel like that honesty has paid dividends to the people who read it. They won't just learn about, you know, baseball, they'll learn about relationships with family and how it impacts baseball players, and maybe, you know, some healing for them too, as it, it was healing for me. If you don't know this about me, and you probably shouldn't, but if you do, I'm kind of scared. Uh, I have a bad case of stage fright when it comes to peeing in public places. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> and you would think that a guy who spends his time showering with as many other guys and peeing in cups for drug tests like I do would never deal with that. But let me tell you, you get me in an airport bathroom that's busy, like they are in Houston, Texas, a national hub, and people are coming in all over the place, I am terrified of peeing around somebody else, because I don't know if he's looking at me. <laughs> and on my, on my left-hand side, in comes, and you wouldn't believe this, but it's true, Emmett Smith.
rolls up to the urinal right next to me. I'm not kidding you, okay? Because everyone behind me is gasping, which didn't help me pee, by the way. They're gasping. And here's Emma Smith on my left hand side. And this is probably the worst place for a guy to stare at another guy. But I gawk over at Emmett Smith like I've never seen a guy in my life, okay? Like, I'm just staring at him. And he's smaller than me, and I mean that in height, not in other. <laughs> and Emmett, who's happily going without any concern for the guy that's lurking over his shoulder, turns and looks at me and then turns sideways like this. <laughs> Without giving away the book, I just you talk about your mother, you talk about your father, and you talk about your brother. Correct. What was their reaction to the book? Uh, at first, they were worried. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I talk about my brother's battle with alcoholism and my dad's battle with manic depression and how my mom kind of weathered the storm. But at the end, you know, there's, uh, and I don't want to spoil it too much, but at the end, there's this great moment of resolution. Um, not how everything just becomes saccharine sweet and the violins play and it's all fixed. You know, but how our perspective changes and how we look at weakness as a strength, you know, and, it, and really those hard parts in our life make us who we are. Not those great championship moments, but how we endure the tough spots. And I think that is something they really feel vindicated by, me showing the brokenness, but also the healing in a real relatable way.